in this uh, segment we'll talk about the actual reabsorption which takes place in the nephron through various parts so for that we will draw the complete nephron and then we'll understand how these various things get absorbed and as we are focusing on reabsorption we would just take up those areas in detail where this absorption is taking place so this is bowman's capsule the first part that is formed is proximal convoluted tubule this proximal convoluted tubule goes deeper into the medulla and forms a loop like structure that is henle's loop and this is what is the division line this is cortex and this part is the medulla so this is the loop of henle it bends it takes a u turn here and then the upper arm the arm which is going upward as we have seen it is slightly thicker so it comes here then it changes into next coiled part that is dct which opens into the collecting duct we have seen this structure in detail but why we are uh, drawing it again because now we want to show where which substance gets absorbed so the filtrate which is formed here by ultra filtration that is step number 1 of urine formation this is the nephric filtrate and we have seen what all things are there in the nephric filtrate glucose is there amino acids uh, vitamins uh, certain uh, enzymes so it's not sorry enzymes are not there vitamins certain uh, ions all these things are to be reabsorbed so now when it comes into pct pct in proximal convoluted tubule most of the absorption which takes place most of the absorption which takes place is active and for active absorption it has certain adaptations which also we discussed earlier the cells of pct they have a uh, microvilli that means they have brush bordered epithelium and the cells have high number of mitochondria because they have to help in active absorption the substances which get absorbed here are glucose 100% amino acids 100% and and when we were talking about the threshold substances threshold of substances these are high threshold substances so glucose amino acids these are absorbed actively so their absorption is active about 70% of sodium ions 75% of potassium ions they are also absorbed actively now chloride ions these chloride ions they passively diffuse so this is by diffusion so it can be by active or passive so this is mainly active and as we said pct proximal convoluted tubule helps in mainly active absorption plus there is absorption of little water and that is by simple osmosis again passive so this is by osmosis a little quantity of urea also is absorbed so urea is also absorbed passively by diffusion so most of the things are absorbed actively certain things passively move out that is from the filtrate the things get absorbed so when this filtrate it comes here through pct what all has been absorbed all glucose and we have to remember that these are high threshold substances but even for high threshold substances there is an upper limit like we talked about glucose so its highest value which can be absorbed is 180 mg to 100 mL of nephric filtrate amino acids their absorption is active 
Ions like sodium and potassium ions, about 70 to 75 percent, again absorbed actively. And few other things like chlorine ions, water and urea, they passively get absorbed. So here there is no expenditure of energy. And most of the absorption is active. Most, like this is active and this is all. So most of the things get absorbed actively. Few things passively get absorbed. Now this filtrate which comes here that is into this tube is the descending limb of loop. Descending limb. And as we have seen in the structure this membrane of descending limb is permeable only to water. So here this is the descending limb. Only water comes out. So water gets absorbed here. Now if we compare all these things coming going in going out, what is happening to the concentration? We said the nephric filtrate is almost at the same concentration as that of the plasma. Now when it is coming down, only water is getting absorbed. So when it comes here, it is almost isotonic. When only water gets absorbed, that means we are removing the solvent, the solute particles are as it is. So when it comes up to the bottom, it would get little hypertonic. Now, this limb, that is the ascending limb. Ascending limb, ascending limb is impervious to water. It does not absorb or help in absorption of water. But it helps in absorption of ions like sodium and chloride ions. It also helps in absorption of little potassium ions. So it is mainly sodium ions and potassium ions. This is again main ions and chloride ions are going to passively diffuse. So when the filtrate, now this liquid is going up, Water was removed, so it became little concentrated, hypertonic. As it moves up, only solute is removed, water is not removed. So from hyper, it will again become isotonic. Now this filtrate comes into the distal convoluted tubule, DCT. In DCT, again, there is absorption of ions. So it is mainly... Sodium ions, potassium ions, chloride ions mainly. And all these places even bicarbonate ions are also absorbed. Bicarbonate ions, here also we would have bicarbonate ions. So it is mainly for uh, ion absorption. The last part, this is the collecting duct. Collecting duct. In collecting duct, it is mainly absorption of water. So from here it is water which gets absorbed. Now what is happening in this entire nephron, in various parts of this uh, nephron, the things which got filtered due to ultrafiltration and out of which the things which are useful would get reabsorbed. And that is why we are talking of selective reabsorption here. The filtrate which is formed by ultrafiltration of plasma contains glucose, amino acid, chloride ions, vitamin C and certain important ions like sodium potassium. When it is passing through proximal convoluted tubule, maximum active absorption takes place. Glucose amino acids get absorbed 100%. And that is actively. Active absorption can take place even against concentration gradient. Sodium and potassium ions about 70 to 75 percent. Again active. And other things they are passively taken. The filtrate comes into the descending limb. Descending limb is per permeable or it allows entry of only water. So only water would get absorbed. Here we would write that here the liquid is isotonic. 
by the time it comes here because only solvent is removed solute particle whatever is there still remains as it is so it becomes little hypertonic the liquid which is here is little hypertonic when this filtrate goes up then again solute is removed solvent is not taken so it will become less concentrated and by the time it comes here it is again iso tonic and then when it passes through collecting duct most of the water about 95 percent of the water which is absorbed is absorbed here and there is a specific reason for it the wall of collecting duct is sensitive or its permeability is controlled by vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone anti-diuretic hormone controls it and this hormone is responsible for absorption of water which totally depends on how much fluid intake has taken place how much sweating is there or if a person is taking some kind of diuretic so that would control the urine volume ultimately so this is the tubular reabsorption why are we calling it reabsorption is glucose was absorbed already when we digest the food and after that it gets absorbed so that was the first time absorption of glucose here that same glucose is getting absorbed again and that is why we are using the word reabsorption and it is selected the substances which are of high threshold or low threshold only those substances are selected and absorbed as we have seen some urea also diffuses here some urea would also come here again by simple diffusion so urea small quantity it is a low threshold substance it gets absorbed in a very small quantity and that too by passive movement not actively the the liquid which comes here that is again in the cortex through the ascending limb again becomes isotonic in dct again ions get absorbed and collecting that mainly absorbs water now the liquid the filtrate which was formed here which we call nephric filtrate or primary urine by the time it comes here it would have only those things which are not required by the body plus the third step that is tubular secretion would also pour certain things into this filtrate and when it reaches here by the end of this part we start calling it urine earlier it was called only nephric filtrate because it has all those important things also when it comes here then we start calling it urine so this is what happens in selective reabsorption now let us talk about the tubular secretion 